all right what's up everyone welcome back in this video what we're gonna do is continue our reinforced concrete analysis and design sequence and talk about how a reinforced concrete beam behaves when it's subjected to a load and hopefully by the end of this video you're gonna be able to describe in terms of strains the behavior of a ductile singly reinforced concrete beam that is subject to flexural loading. And then we'll also identify some analytical approaches to each stage or point of reinforced concrete beam behavior that's significant for us in terms of analyzing and designing later on. So let's start by taking into consideration a simply supported reinforced concrete beam and let's have it being loaded by two concentrated forces and I'll call those each P applied and there are some distances here the term singly implies that you have you have reinforcement only on the tension side of the beam for this loading we've got the bottom is in tension the bottom of this beam is in tension so we're gonna have reinforcement that goes along the bottom I represent that by a dotted line and that's where that steel would be and if I do a simple structural analysis based on the symmetry of my beam and the loading, I know that each of these reactions at the supports are just also going to be P applied here. This loading configuration is actually pretty popular for testing because when you do a, a structural analysis or you draw the shear moment diagrams, this region B right here between the two concentrated loads is under pure bending. Assuming you can neglect the dead weight of the, of the structure, the applied loading causes section B, this length B, to be under pure bending, no shear, and no axial loading. So that if you were to take a cut somewhere between the two applied loads, you would have this free body diagram. And you have this internal shear, I'll call that V applied, and this internal moment M applied. And from equilibrium equations, you would find that this V, the internal shear here, is zero. This internal moment is constant and would have this value of P applied times A. The cross-section of a singly reinforced beam would look like this. Where the beam that has a height H here, this height would also translate over here to this cross-section. And I would have steel reinforcement where I had that dotted line for the tensile steel or the steel reinforcement. I would have steel reinforcing bars here and this would be the area of steel this capital a s the beam let's say has a width b and the depth to steel from the extreme compression fiber which is the extreme compression fiber is the top of this beam in this case and to my steel location right here the centroid of that steel we're going to call d and as this loading is applied or increased from zero i'm going to start experiencing strains compressive strain at the top tension strain at the bottom and I'm going to draw what is called the strain profile for my beam cross section. In most cases in reinforced concrete analysis we're going to assume that it's always linear and so here is the strain profile where the very top fiber, this layer, has a value epsilon compression for compressive strain and the very bottom right here the extreme tensile fiber we'll call epsilon tension for the tensile strain which is all at concrete and then at the steel layer at the centroid of the steel group we'll say that here it has a strain value we'll call that epsilon s and the point where we have zero strain we're going to call the neutral axis depth and I'm going to call that CNA which is the depth to the neutral axis from the extreme compression fiber. Maybe one more thing that is going to be important for us right now in describing this beam behavior is this angle right here, which is really the curvature of the beam, this theta. And the reason you can tell that this thing is the curvature, theta, is curvature. If you tried to calculate this, you would have, by, similar, by ratios or similar triangles, it would be epsilon compression over CNA, which has units of one over length. Remember, strains are dimensionless, and so that is the unit of curvature. 
And really, the this you know this geometry, this A S, this B, and this D are what we describe or how we describe reinforced concrete members that are subject to flexure. This neutral axis depth is going to become a really important part of how we do reinforced concrete analysis later on. Let's consider as we increase this loading P, we're going to increase the applied moment that the beam experiences internally. And as the moment increases, we expect the strains to increase, which will cause the curvature to increase. And so we can draw a moment curvature diagram to describe my beam's behavior or response to increasing load. Call this axis the applied moment and this the curvature. And what happens as my loading increases, so as I, as I start the test, I apply the loads, uh, what I'm going to do is, obviously, you know, when I have no moment, I have no curvature because I'm going to have zero strains. So here, I'm going to start at zero, if you will, right here. As I start increasing the load, my moment increases, my curvature increases, everything is great. All the materials are linear elastic. And then, bam, the, the concrete cracks in tension because concrete is weak in tension. What happens is there's some discontinuity that occurs because the material cracks. You know, the way we're going to draw that is we have this kind of a step that occurs right here. And that event, that moment associated with that event, we're going to call that this cracking moment, MCR. And then I continue to keep loading my structure or my beam. I keep increasing the loading, that P applied. And my moment continues to increase as my curvature increases. It's cracked and it stays linear elastic until the steel yields. And right here, this would be associated with the yield moment so that the curvature Curvature has increased so much that my strain in the steel has reached the yield value. Then, after the yielding occurs, we start seeing where the plastic deformation might occur in this moment curvature relationship. And here, this graph tends more horizontally, increases slightly decreases and then fails where the concrete ruptures there's no more concrete available in compression to hold load so there's no moment c capacity available and, and the beam collapses and really the the point that we want to look at is around the peak height which is right about here and this peak moment we're going to call the nominal moment or the theoretical strength. This graph here alludes to what I'm going to identify as the four stages of, of beam behavior that we need to look at. This first stage is this linear portion right here. This is stage one where nothing is cracked. It's uncracked linear elastic material behavior. And then stage two is really a point where my concrete cracks in tension and my materials, the concrete and the steel namely, are still in their linear elastic regions. Then as I continue, this region right here, up to pretty much up to yielding right here, this we'll call this stage three, I have a cracked section, cracked in tension, and my materials are again linear elastic. And this stage three is typically what we call in-service behavior. This is basically when the reinforced concrete structure is in normal operation. We expect it to have actually cracked in some locations in tension, but all the materials typically remain linear elastic. Last but not least, the fourth stage, really it's the fourth point, and a lot of times we refer to point four or stage four as ultimate behavior. And that is associated with the nominal or theoretical moment strength of the beam. And basically what happens here at ultimate, ultimate is means that concrete crushes in compression. And the stage four, the location left or right, depends on where you define concrete crush in terms of strain. And this is how I would say that you would describe reinforced concrete beam behavior to a friend. But the reality is, each of these stages need a mathematical definition in order for us to do any sort of analysis. And the way that we're going to define these stages is by the strains that my, that the concrete and the steel are experiencing in compression and tension. And, and with these strain values, we're going to be able to come up with the stress profile, or at least the shape of the stress profile. And, and more importantly then, we'll be able to calculate moments from given stresses or strains, or calculate strains and stresses from a known moment value.